Okay, so Bayes' rule is, is, it's true. It's like a mathematical truth, right? We just derived it from the definition of conditional probability. So if, if you have some data and you're wondering whether some hypothesis is true, this is the optimal way to figure it out. If you know these quantities, this is the computation you do to figure out if the thing is true. This is very handy. If your job is to figure out if the Russians are attacking, you really want to know Bayes' law. If you are a robot wandering around the world and you're wondering if you're in Kingsbury or not, it's really helpful to know this model. If you are an agent in the post office looking at a letter trying to figure out if it's a zero or a seven, you want to know this. Because this is going to be the prior probability of a seven. This is your generative model of sevens and this is problematic, but we'll get rid of it soon. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I guess the question becomes sort of what is D here in the assignment? Um, you have all these different features of an instance. What to do? Like, so that means these are like a huge dimensional probability distribution and oh my god, how do we even write down a 200 dimensional probability distribution, what does that even mean? I have a headache, let's stop. So that's where this word comes in. We're going to just put our head in the sand and actually pretend not that we have a 200 dimensional fancy probability distribution, but that we have 200 completely separate independent little sensors, even though it's totally not true that the different pixels in an image are independent. So that's why it's called naive. It's basically, we all know it's wrong, and it turns out to work incredibly well in practice. This completely wrong model. So, so this thing that we're scared of representing, that's zillion dimensional, um, the probability of these different features, given that the given our hypothesis, we're going to represent that as each of these things is completely separate and independent. And we just multiply the probabilities together. This, I don't know if you haven't seen this pi thing. It's just like a, a, a you know, the, the, the capital S, the sigma, is a summation. This is a product. So it's got a capital pi. I love cherry pie, so I'm not, I love products too. Um, so we just, we take the product over all the pi, over all the i's of the, the separate probability of xi given the hypothesis. You just multiply them all together, pretend that, which is equal to assuming that they're completely independent and uncorrelated, which is totally false, but it makes it really easy to write down. This is a very naive model of the probability distribution over the data given the hypothesis. Like if it's a seven, do we want to write down the probability of each of these pixels being on or off or having any of their particular values? Like, no. We'd, 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 we'd like to treat each pixel independently. So that's what we're going to do. Instead of trying to specify this huge big joint distribution, we're going to, just going to say, for every individual single pixel independently, what's the probability that that pixel is a zero? What's the probability that pixel is a one? What's the probability that pixel is a two? What's the distribution over pixel values if it's a seven? And for a, a nice, small, discrete probability distribution like the one you are facing in your assignment, these little models are just little tables. Really simple. You can just compute this by looking at the data and counting. How many times was it a zero when it was a seven? How many times was it a one when it was a seven? How many times was it a three when it was a seven? Dan. So that, that H is, I guess, sort of like an H sub I. It's like, it's like that attribute in. Uh... This is going to be your class that you're looking for. This is the class um, of that instance, the label of the instance. What's the probability that, a, that if it's a seven, what's the distribution over that values okay. for that pixel? So you're going to look at every instance of that class and look at that attribute. That attribute, yeah. Attribute term, uh, in that class and then find the percentage or the, the Find the probability distribution over the different values. Okay. Yep. 
Yep, it's like you're building like a little histogram for each pixel, for each class. Everybody got that? Nathan. For P of D, this thing here, yeah. we haven't talked about that yet. Oh, exactly. Ka ching yeah, uh, you're right, it's not there yet. But uh, yeah, don't worry about that. We'll talk about that in a sec. Beautiful question. Let me just see if there's anything else on the slide I should talk about before answering your question. Um, we're going to assume that the attributes are independent given the class. Oh, yeah, now we, put, we stick it all together in Bayes' law. All right, here's the answer to Nathan's question. Um, so we rewrite this. Now we, we know what, how to represent this part. We're just going to say <laughs> it's just the product. So now we have the probability of it being a 7, given all the pixel values, is something I'll talk about in a sec. Um, probability of the hypothesis times the probability of the data given the hypothesis divided by the probability of the data. Now, the, this probability of the data thing is really annoying. Um, people don't, yeah, it's just annoying. Um, so what people do is ignore it. And they say, oh, there's some factor alpha. It's like 1 over P of D. And everything is multiplied by alpha. Um, for the purposes of classification, you don't care what this is. We're going to be trying to compute the probability of each value of the hypothesis given the specific data that we have. So if you think about what's the probability it's a 7 given the data? What's the probability it's a 6 given the data? What's the probability it's a 5 given the data? What's the probability it's a 3 given the data? Think about all those equations. They're all going to have P, the probability of D, in the denominator in every single one. So what we're going to do is just not even bother to compute that. It's just a scaling factor. We're going to take whichever class is most probable, given the data. We don't really, only if, you are, only if your professor is mean enough to ask you to return a confidence do we actually need real probabilities. But if he does ask you for real probabilities, you can say that you know it's one of these. So the values over all the values for the hypotheses have to add up to 1. So you just add them all up and divide, and then you're good to go. So that way, we're kind of fudging this p of d part of the equation. Um, and, but that's entirely standard, and that's what people do. Because it's the same for each one, because we have this is the data we have. Um, so who cares what its probability is? Um, because we know that the hypothesis, is, we know that it, one of these hypotheses is going to be true. So that's why there's this little alpha here. This is the normalization factor, the annoying little, you know, A for annoying, um, little normalization factor. So this is just Bayes' law with the denominator fudged out. Um, and this is the naive base classifier. What could I possibly have saved for the next slide since I already showed you the classifier? Not much. Um, uh, well, something. Does anyone have questions about this basic equation for the naive base classifier? Dan. So is P of D relevant when it's like you're taking data from sensors and there's a percent and, and there's a chance that the sensors gave you bad data? Yes. Any other questions? So, oh, maximum likelihood means to ignore the prior. Um, so maybe this is the likelihood. Um, so like if you looked over all the hypotheses and picked the one 
that made the data the most likely, that's called the maximum likelihood estimate. But it's really important to put in the priors. Now in your assignment, okay, I guess it's kind of pointless because the prior for each hypothesis is going to be the same. But in most applications, the data is highly skewed. Um, you know, like if you're doing credit card fraud, for example, you know, you have tons of training data and almost all transactions are non-fraudulent. So it's pretty important to take that into account. Um, so uh, I don't know. It's like highly classified trade secret what the credit card companies actually use. But I will tell you, they come to the AI conference every year. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you might hear people talk about it fancy things like take the maximum a posteriori uh, hypothesis and that just means go through and pick the biggest one the 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 one this is called the posterior because it's after you've seen the data what's your estimate of the probability of the, of the hypothesis um, so it's posterior after the data and you pick the the maximum one pick the highest the most likely hypothesis so it's just fancy words for what you're going to be doing on the assignment <laughs>